Okay, now, how far around the room has the iPhone gone? Here. Here. It's in my wife's hands. I am so surprised. <laughs> All right. I've got one more phone to pass around that has to do with this whole issue. What you're seeing when you're looking at the iPhone is the 4G. Um, I had an iPhone before that, the 3GS. And on the same day that my buddy Mark over here was cycling home with his iPhone 3G carefully in his zippered pocket, going home by bicycle in the rain, when he got home, he found out that he hadn't quite zipped it enough and it actually acted as a funnel to fill that pocket with water during his transport. We both came in minus iPhone because uh, <clears throat> I wasn't hit by the same rainstorm, but I was holding a party before the rain happened and somebody splashed me from my pool and drowned my iPhone. So the second iPhone doesn't work, so you can't play ABBA on it. It's just so that you can see the difference in what they call the form factor, the shape of it. Now, the original iPhone has a curved back to it, so it sits in the hand very nicely. You might notice the newer iPhone, you tend to grip it by the edges, the edge towards your palm and your fingers on the opposite side to hold it. You can't really hold it against your palm very easily because it's got a flat back on it. Now, the other thing dealing with the iPhone 4 I want to mention to you is there are a whole bunch of advantages to the iPhone 4 and I would take it over the iPhone 3 any day because its battery life is longer, significantly so. For low vision people, this is the one you want to be considering because it comes not only with voiceover, a free screen reader built in, it also comes with zoom in it, a free screen magnifier, and it has a very, very crisp, clean-looking screen that you can have a lot of control over how it looks. Okay? You might have heard the rumors, and they were more than rumors, about problems with the iPhone 4G. What was the problem? The antenna issue. So let me, let me debunk a myth. When we used analog phones, and it showed five bars, right? It was how strong the signal was. Bars on a digital phone are a myth. They are a myth. Because a digital phone is either connected or it's not connected. It's not connected almost. It's not connected but faint. It's either connected or not. The original five bars on an iPhone. Actually, if you showed five bars, you had 40. Okay, let's say you only had four bars. <laughs> if you had those bars, you only had about 40% of the maximum amount of signal strength that you could get. In other words, there is a point where you're going down to that one bar and you might flicker down to no bars that you might lose connection but there's no difference between five, four, three, and two. None. It's either on or it's off. Now it's true that there is a problem with the iPhone 4. There are two physical problems with it. One is, in order to get that extra battery life and twice as much memory and to turn off the radio receiver, you had to put the antenna on the outside of the case, not on the inside of the case. Anybody who does radio knows that antennas on the outside of the case are actually better than internal antennas. So it giveth and it taketh away a little bit. You can hold it in such a way that you put your fingers in two different places in the lower left corner along the edge and you virtually short out temporarily that antenna. So the answer to the problem is, like the doctor said, does it hurt when you do that? Don't do that. And one of the ways they get around the don't do that part is one, they've changed the software in it so that this is significantly less an issue. Two, they will, when you buy it, if you ask for it, 
give you a free skin for it that will keep you from doing that whole two-finger bridge thing along the edge. Okay? So the antenna thing becomes a non-issue. So, better battery, better battery life, as good a reception as you ever got, crisper looking screen, same price. I think that's wonderful when the new thing comes out. It doesn't cost me more than the old thing. Uh, that works out very, very well. Let's talk about that phone, because unlike the Motorola Droid, which had a keyboard backup where you could get access to it from afar, Wait a minute, I'm going to make sure my PowerPoint's caught up with me. Bullet touch screen. Bullet slide keyboard. Slide fail. Bullet iOS. The operating system of an iPhone is iOS. Well, you know, an iPod, an iPhone, an iPad, an iTouch. I mean, of course, it's going to be an iOS to go along with it. Bullet voiceover. The screen reader that comes in it is called voiceover. And voiceover is free, it's relatively easy to get started. That is, you simply go to settings, general, accessibility, click yes for voiceover and it's on. You can then do all kinds of configuration of voiceover on an as needed basis. I'm now going to turn my iPhone on. I just pushed the button. We're gonna see how long it takes for it to do its miraculous, wonderful thing. One of the strange things is along the bottom edge is the speaker. <laughs> this is one of the wonderful things. You know, when I told my boss I wanted to create an online course in the use of accessible cell phones, uh, it's now on. So that wasn't a bad start time. Okay, is that this industry changes more rapidly than anything you ever saw in your life. It just is so rapid and a two-year contract to be tethered to the same phone for two years. You know, it's like a, no, I can't use that analogy. It'd get me in serious trouble. It's just a huge commitment at the time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this phone is I'm going to unlock it because it comes locked. So I'm going to push the power button. It told me the time. Saturday, September 11th. Slide to unlock. And it said slide, slide to tap. unlock. But I can double tap. Contacts. Double tap to open. And it's now unlocked. And I've only got one button on the surface of it called the home button. It always takes me back to the home screen from wherever I am. I'm now going to put my finger in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and stroke down at a 45-degree angle, only about a quarter of an inch to maybe a half inch. Come on, you so-and-so. Wait, I went too Double far. Tap to open. Four or five bars. Signal strength. Status bar item. So I'm now on the status bar at the top of the phone. I'm going to now stroke from left to right what the manual calls flicking, like flicking a piece of lint off your jacket. I wonder where they came up with that phrase. Clearly a blind person didn't say, you know, that's just like when I flick lint off my jacket. We don't do that. We can't find the lint to flick. But nonetheless, they said it's like flicking lint off, a off that. Well, come up with a better analogy. I'm going to stroke about an inch going left to right across the face of the phone anywhere. AT&T network, status Eight. bar item. Three of three bars, Wi-Fi, 2.33 p.m. Status, 97% battery power, status bar item. So it's reading me the data at the top of that screen. I'm now going to put my finger in the lower left corner, that was along the top edge, and move my finger up. Phone, two new items. Double tap to open. This thing keeps going ping, 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 right? The droid phone was going ping, 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 ping. All right. So I'm going up from that lower left corner, up. Phone, two new items. And it said phone. Double tap because if we're on the bottom edge of the phone, there are what they call a dock area. If you're a Mac user, you're used to the concept of dock. It's kind of like 
your quick launch bar at the bottom of the window screen. So phone is down there. Mail, 66 new items. Mail is down there with 66 new items. Safari. Safari, which is the web browser. iPod. And what was that one? iPod. It's my music player, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger again up in this upper left-hand corner and come down at a 45-degree angle, passing over, passing over the status bar. at and Network. Status bar item. Oh, a little farther down. Three of three bars. Contacts. And you hear it say contacts. What can happen on this phone is we can have four icons going left to right and four icons going up and down for a total of four times four times four times four times. <laughs> Take off my left shoe. <laughs> Sixteen icons on a screen, okay? And to move between them, either I can roam my finger around and touch around and to see where it is. Settings. Settings. Have to open. Whenever I'm in no man's land, you hear that beep, beep, beep. Notes. There's Double notes to open. going to the left of notes. Voice map settings. Slide 12. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the ranch. So you get the idea that I can stroke around and I know where I'm in in no man's land versus touching an icon. But I never do it that way. When you look at a grid layout on a Windows list of things, do you remember what your desktop icons are, one versus another? No. You simply tap, 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 tap. Right? The equivalent here is stroke, 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 stroke. Okay? I'm on there somewhere. And I'm going to stroke. Voice memos. Voice memos. I'm going to stroke backward until I get back up to. Message. Camera. Digital. Calendar. Contacts. So there's contacts. Calendar. A calendar. Double tap to open. Digitize. Digitize. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. Camera. Camera. Double tap to open. This has a camera, by the way, both facing you, the user, and facing away from you. First phone to do that. Messages. Messages. That's my email. Weather. Double tap to open. Voice memos. Voice memo. Double tap notes. Notes. Clock. Clock. Settings. Settings. Double iTunes. iTunes. Double tap to open. Page one of two. Oh, pardon me, iTunes. Pardon me. Phone. Two and then I'm back down to lower. Now, the fact of the matter is I have more than one screen full of programs. So how do I get to page two? I put three fingers along the right margin of the screen and stroke from right to left like turning a page. And now I'm on page two of two. Double tap to, open. to go to the reverse, I put those three fingers on the left margin and go to the right. Page one of two. And I'm back Contacts. to page one of two. Double tap to open. This is what they're talking about when they talk about gesture-based controls. You can single tap, double tap, with one finger, two finger, or three fingers. You can stroke up, down, left, right, with one finger, two finger, or three fingers. And you can do this ever so cool thing called rotor, which I'll show you in just a moment. 